Virtual reality VR is an experience taking place within a computer-generated reality of immersive environments can be similar to or completely different from the real world. Applications of virtual reality can include entertainment i.e. gaming and educational purposes i.e. medical or military training. Other, distinct types of VR-style technology include augmented reality and mixed reality. Currently standard virtual reality systems use either virtual reality headsets or multi-projected environments to generate realistic images, sounds and other sensations that simulate a user's physical presence in a virtual environment. A person using virtual reality equipment is able to look around the artificial world, move around in it, and interact with virtual features or items. The effect is commonly created by VR headsets consisting of a head-mounted display with a small screen in front of the eyes, but can also be created through specially designed rooms with multiple large screens. Virtual reality typically incorporates auditory and video feedback, but may also allow other types of sensory and force feedback through haptic technology. Topic Etymology Virtual has had the meaning of being something in essence or effect, though not actually or in fact, since the mid 1400s. The term virtual has been used in the computer sense of not physically existing but made to appear by software. Since 1959, in 1938, French avant-garde playwright Antonin Artaud described the illusory nature of characters and objects in the theatre as la réalité virtuelle. In a collection of essays, Le Tater et Sun Double. The English translation of this book, published in 1958 as The Theatre and Its Double, is the earliest published use of the term virtual reality. The term Artificial reality, coined by Myron Kruger, has been in use since the 1970s. The term, virtual reality, was first used in a science fiction context in the Judas Mandala, a 1982 novel by Damien Broderick. <laughs> Forms and methods One method by which virtual reality can be realized is simulation-based virtual reality. Driving simulators, for example, give the driver on board the impression of actually driving an actual vehicle by predicting vehicular motion caused by driver input and feeding back corresponding visual, motion and audio cues to the driver. With avatar image-based virtual reality, people can join the virtual environment in the form of real video as well as an avatar. One can participate in the 3D distributed virtual environment as form of either a conventional avatar or a real video. A user can select own type of participation based on the system capability. In projector-based virtual reality, modeling of the real environment plays a vital role in various virtual reality applications, such as robot navigation, construction modeling, and airplane simulation. Image-based virtual reality system has been gaining popularity in computer graphics and computer vision communities. In generating realistic models, it is essential to accurately register acquired 3D data. Usually, camera is used for modeling small objects at a short distance. Desktop-based virtual reality involves displaying a 3D virtual world on a regular desktop display without use of any specialized positional tracking equipment. Many modern first-person video games can be used as an example, using various triggers, responsive characters, and other such interactive devices to make the user feel as though they are in a virtual world. A common criticism of this form of immersion is that there is no sense of peripheral vision, limiting the user's ability to know what is happening around them. 
A head-mounted display HMD more fully immerses the user in a virtual world. A virtual reality headset typically includes two small high-resolution OLED or LCD monitors which provide separate images for each eye for stereoscopic graphics rendering a 3D virtual world, a binaural audio system, positional and rotational real-time head tracking for six degrees of movement. Options include motion controls with haptic feedback for physically interacting within the virtual world in an intuitive way with little to no abstraction and an omnidirectional treadmill for more freedom of physical movement allowing the user to perform locomotive motion in any direction. Augmented reality is a type of virtual reality technology that blends what the user sees in their real surroundings with digital content generated by computer software. The additional software generated images with the virtual scene typically enhance how the real surroundings look in some way. Our systems lay a virtual information over a camera live feed into a headset or smart glasses or through a mobile device giving the user the ability to view three-dimensional images. Mixed reality is the merging of the real world and virtual worlds to produce new environments and visualizations where physical and digital objects coexist and interact in real time. A cyberspace is a networked virtual reality. Simulated reality is a hypothetical virtual reality as truly immersive as the actual reality, enabling an advanced lifelike experience or even virtual eternity. It is most likely to be produced using a brain computer interface and quantum computing. Topic: History The exact origins of virtual reality are disputed, partly because of how difficult it has been to formulate a definition for the concept of an alternative existence. The development of perspective in Renaissance Europe created convincing depictions of spaces that did not exist, in what has been referred to as the multiplying of artificial worlds. Other elements of virtual reality appeared as early as the 1860s. Antoninato took the view that illusion was not distinct from reality, advocating that spectators at a play should suspend disbelief and regard the drama on stage as reality. The first references to the more modern concept of virtual reality came from science fiction. Topic: <laughs> Late 20th century. Morton Heilig wrote in the 1950s of an experience theater that could encompass all the senses in an effective manner, thus drawing the viewer into the on-screen activity. He built a prototype of his vision dubbed the Sensorama in 1962, along with five short films to be displayed in it while engaging multiple senses sight, sound, smell, and touch. Predating digital computing, the Sensorama was a mechanical device. Heilig also developed what he referred to as the telesphere mask, patented in 1960. The patent application described the device as a telescopic television apparatus for individual use. The spectator is given a complete sensation of reality, i.e. moving three-dimensional images which may be in color, with 100% peripheral vision, binaural sound, sense and air breezes." Around the same time, Douglas Engelbart used computer screens both as input and output devices. In 1968, Ivan Sutherland, with the help of his students including Bob Spruill, created what was widely considered to be the first head-mounted display system for use in immersive simulation applications. It was primitive both in terms of user interface and visual realism, and the HMD to be worn by the user was so heavy that it had to be suspended from the ceiling. The graphics comprising the virtual environment were simple wireframe model rooms. The formidable appearance of the device inspired its name, the Sword of Damocles.
1970–1990 The virtual reality industry mainly provided VR devices for medical, flight simulation, automobile industry design, and military training purposes from 1970 to 1990. David M. became the first artist to produce navigable virtual worlds at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory (JPL) from 1977 to 1984. The Aspen Movie Map, a crude virtual tour in which users could wander the streets of Aspen in one of the three modes summer, winter, and polygons, was created at the MIT in 1978. In 1979, Eric Howlett developed the Large Expanse, Extra Perspective Leap optical system. The combined system created a stereoscopic image with a field of view wide enough to create a convincing sense of space. The users of the system have been impressed by the sensation of depth field of view in the scene and the corresponding realism. The original LEAP system was redesigned for NASA's Ames Research Center in 1985 for their first virtual reality installation, The View Virtual Interactive Environment Workstation by Scott Fisher. The LEAP system provides the basis for most of the modern virtual reality headsets. By the 1980s, the term, virtual reality was popularized by Geron Lanier, one of the modern pioneers of the field. Lanier had founded the company VPL Research in 1985. VPL Research has developed several VR devices like the Dataglove, the iPhone, and the Audiosphere. VPL licensed the Dataglove technology to Mattel, which used it to make the Power Glove, an early affordable VR device. Atari founded a research lab for virtual reality in 1982, but the lab was closed after two years due to the Atari Shock North American video game crash of 1983. However, its hired employees, such as Tom Zimmerman, Scott Fisher, Jaron Lanier, Michael Nymark, and Brenda Laurel, kept their research and development on VR-related technologies. Topic 1990 to 2000. The 1990s saw the first widespread commercial releases of consumer headsets. In 1992, for instance, Computer Gaming World predicted affordable VR by 1994. In 1991, Sega announced the Sega VR headset for arcade games and the Mega Drive console. It used LCD screens in the visor, stereo headphones, and inertial sensors that allowed the system to track and react to the movements of the user's head. In the same year, Virtuality launched and went on to become the first mass-produced, networked, multiplayer VR entertainment system that was released in many countries, including a dedicated VR arcade at Embarcadero Center. Costing up to $73,000 per multi-pod virtuality system, they featured headsets and exoskeleton gloves that gave one of the first immersive VR experiences. That same year, Carolina Cruz Nera, Daniel J. Sandin and Thomas A. DeFanti from the Electronic Visualization Laboratory created the first cubic immersive room, the Cave Automatic Virtual Environment Cave. Developed as Cruz Nera's PhD thesis, it involved a multi-projected environment, similar to the holodeck, allowing people to see their own bodies in relation to others in the room. Antonio Medina, a MIT graduate and NASA scientist, designed a virtual reality system to drive Mars rovers from Earth in apparent real time despite the substantial delay of Mars-Earth-Mars -Mars signals. In 1992, Nicole Stenger created Angels, the first real-time interactive immersive movie where the interaction was facilitated with a data glove and high-resolution goggles. That same year, Louis Rosenberg created the virtual fixtures system at the U.S. Air Force's Armstrong Labs using a full upper body exoskeleton, enabling a physically realistic mixed reality in 3D. 
The system enabled the overlay of physically real 3D virtual objects registered with a user's direct view of the real world, producing the first true augmented reality experience enabling sight, sound, and touch. By 1994, Sega released the Sega VR One Motion Simulator arcade attraction, in Sega World Amusement Arcades. It was able to track head movement and featured 3D polygon graphics in stereoscopic 3D, powered by the Sega Model 1 arcade system board. Apple released QuickTime VR, which, despite using the term, VR, was unable to represent virtual reality, and instead displayed 360 photographic panoramas. Nintendo's Virtual Boy console was released in 1995. A group in Seattle created public demonstrations of a cave-like, 270-degree immersive projection room called the Virtual Environment Theater, produced by entrepreneurs Chet Daggett and Bob Jacobson. Forte released the VFX-1, a PC-powered virtual reality headset that same year. In 1999, entrepreneur Philip Rosedale formed Linden Lab with an initial focus on the development of VR hardware. In its earliest form, the company struggled to produce a commercial version of the rig, which was realized in prototype form as a clunky steel contraption with several computer monitors that users could wear on their shoulders. The concept was later adapted into the personal computer-based, 3D virtual world program Second Life. Topic: 21st century. The 2000s were a period of relative public and investment indifference to commercially available VR technologies. In 2001, SAS Cube SAS3 became the first PC-based cubic room, developed by ZA Production Morris Benayoun, David Nahn, Barco, and Clarté. It was installed in Laval, France. The SAS library gave birth to Virtual's VR Pack. In 2007, Google introduced Street View, a service that shows panoramic views of an increasing number of worldwide positions such as roads, indoor buildings and rural areas. It also features a stereoscopic 3D mode, introduced in 2010. Topic: 2010 present. In 2010, Palmer Lucky designed the first prototype of the Oculus Rift. This prototype, built on a shell of another virtual reality headset, was only capable of rotational tracking. However, it boasted a 90-degree field of vision that was previously unseen in the consumer market at the time. Distortion issues arising from the lens used to create the field of vision were corrected for by software written by John Carmack for a version of Doom 3. This initial design would later serve as a basis from which the later designs came. In 2012, the Rift is presented for the first time at the E3 gaming trade show by Carmack. In 2014, Facebook purchased Oculus VR for what at the time was stated as $2 billion but later revealed that the more accurate figure was $3 billion. This purchase occurred after the first development kits ordered through Oculus 2012 Kickstarter had shipped in 2013 but before the shipping of their second development kits in 2014. Zenimax, Carmack's former employer, sued Oculus and Facebook for taking company secrets to Facebook. The verdict was in favor of Zenimax, settled out of court later. In 2013, Valve Corporation discovered and freely shared the breakthrough of low persistence displays, which make lag free and smear free display of VR content possible. This was adopted by Oculus and was used in all their future headsets. In early 2014, Valve showed off their SteamSight prototype, the precursor to both consumer headsets released in 2016. 
It shared major features with the consumer headsets including separate 1K displays per eye, low persistence, positional tracking over a large area, and Fresnel lenses. HTC and Valve announced the virtual reality headset HTC Vive and controllers in 2015. The set included tracking technology called Lighthouse, which utilized wall-mounted base stations for positional tracking using infrared light. In 2014, Sony announced Project Morpheus, its code name for the PlayStation VR, a virtual reality headset for the PlayStation 4 video game console. In 2015, Google announced Cardboard, a do-it-yourself stereoscopic viewer. The user places their smartphone in the cardboard holder, which they wear on their head. Michael Nymark was appointed Google's first ever resident artist in their new VR division. The Kickstarter campaign for GloveOne, a pair of gloves providing motion tracking and haptic feedback, was successfully funded, with over $150,000 in contributions. Also in 2015, Razer unveiled its open-source project OSVR. By 2016, there have been at least 230 companies developing VR-related products. Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Sony and Samsung all had dedicated R&VR groups. Dynamic binaural audio was common to most headsets released that year. However, haptic interfaces were not well developed, and most hardware packages incorporated button-operated handsets for touch-based interactivity. Visually, displays were still of a low enough resolution and frame rate that images were still identifiable as virtual. In 2016, HTC shipped its first units of the HTC Vive Steam VR headset. This marked the first major commercial release of sensor based tracking, allowing for free movement of users within a defined space. A patent filed by Sony in 2017 showed they were developing a similar location tracking technology to the Vive for PlayStation VR, with the potential for the development of a wireless headset. Technology. Topic: Software. The Virtual Reality Modeling Language (VRML), first introduced in 1994, was intended for the development of virtual worlds without dependency on headsets. The Web 3D Consortium was subsequently founded in 1997 for the development of industry standards for web-based 3D graphics. The consortium subsequently developed X3D from the VRML framework as an archival, open-source standard for web-based distribution of VR content. WEBVR is an experimental JavaScript application programming interface API that provides support for various virtual reality devices, such as the HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, Google Cardboard or OSVR, in a web browser. Topic: Hardware. Modern virtual reality headset displays are based on technology developed for smartphones, including gyroscopes and motion sensors for tracking head, hand, and body positions, small HD screens for stereoscopic displays, and small, lightweight and fast computer processors. These components led to relative affordability for independent VR developers, and lead to the 2012 Oculus Rift Kickstarter offering the first independently developed VR headset. Independent production of VR images and video has increased by the development of omnidirectional cameras, also known as 360 degree cameras or VR cameras, that have the ability to record 360 interactive photography, although at low resolutions or in high highly compressed formats for online streaming of 360 video. 
In contrast, photogrammetry is increasingly used to combine several high-resolution photographs for the creation of detailed 3D objects and environments in VR applications, to create a feeling of immersion, special output devices are needed to display virtual worlds. Well-known formats include head-mounted displays or the cave. In order to convey a spatial impression, two images are generated and displayed from different perspectives stereo projection. There are different technologies available to bring the respective image to the right eye. A distinction is made between active e shutter glasses and passive technologies e.g. polarizing filters or infotech. Special input devices are required for interaction with the virtual world. These include the 3D mouse, the wired glove, motion controllers, and optical tracking sensors. Controllers typically use optical tracking systems primarily infrared cameras for location and navigation, so that the user can move freely without wiring. Some input devices provide the user with force feedback to the hands or other parts of the body, so that the human being can orientate himself in the three-dimensional world through haptics and sensor technology as a further sensory sensation and carry out realistic simulations. Additional haptic feedback can be obtained from omnidirectional treadmills with which walking in virtual space is controlled by real walking movements and vibration gloves and suits. Virtual reality cameras can be used to create VR photography using 360-degree panorama videos. 360-degree camera shots can be mixed with virtual elements to merge reality and fiction through special effects. VR cameras are available in various formats, with varying numbers of lenses installed in the camera. Applications <laughs> 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 Virtual reality is most commonly used in entertainment applications such as video gaming and 3D cinema. Consumer virtual reality headsets were first released by video game companies in the early mid-1990s. Beginning in the 2010s, next-generation commercial tethered headsets were released by Oculus, Rift, HTC, Vive, and Sony PlayStation VR, setting off a new wave of application development. 3D cinema has been used for sporting events, pornography, fine art, music videos, and short films. Since 2015, roller coasters and theme parks have incorporated virtual reality to match visual effects with haptic feedback. In social sciences and psychology, virtual reality offers a cost effective tool to study and replicate interactions in a controlled environment. It can be used as a form of therapeutic intervention. For instance, there is the case of the virtual reality exposure therapy VRET, a form of exposure therapy for treating anxiety disorders such as post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, and phobias. In medicine, simulated VR surgical environments under the supervision of experts can provide effective and repeatable training at a low cost, allowing trainees to recognize and amend errors as they occur. Virtual reality has been used in physical rehabilitation since the 2000s. Despite numerous studies conducted, good quality evidence of its efficacy compared to other rehabilitation methods without sophisticated and expensive equipment is lacking for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. A 2018 review on the effectiveness of mirror therapy by virtual reality and robotics for any type of pathology concluded in a similar way. Another study was conducted that showed the potential for VR to promote mimicry and revealed the difference between neurotypical and autism spectrum disorder individuals in their response to a two-dimensional avatar. VR can simulate real workspaces for workplace occupational safety and health purposes, educational purposes, and training purposes. It can be used to provide learners with a virtual environment where they can develop their skills without the real-world consequences of failing. 
It has been used and studied in primary education, military, astronaut training, flight simulators, minor training, architectural design, driver training and bridge inspection. Immersive VR engineering systems enable engineers to see virtual prototypes prior to the availability of any physical prototypes. Supplementing training with virtual training environments has been claimed to offer avenues of realism in military and healthcare training while minimizing cost. It also has been claimed to reduce military training costs by minimizing the amounts of ammunition expended during training periods. The first fine art virtual world was created in the 1970s. As the technology developed, more artistic programs were produced throughout the 1990s, including feature films. When commercially available technology became more widespread, VR festivals began to emerge in the mid-2010s. The first uses of VR in museum settings began in the 1990s, seeing a significant increase in the mid-2010s. Additionally, museums have begun making some of their content virtual reality accessible. Virtual reality's growing market presents an opportunity and an alternative channel for digital marketing. It is also seen as a new platform for e commerce, particularly in the bid to challenge traditional brick and mortar retailers. However, a 2018 study revealed that the majority of goods are still purchased in physical stores. Topic. Concerns and challenges Topic. Health and safety There are many health and safety considerations of virtual reality. A number of unwanted symptoms have been caused by prolonged use of virtual reality, and these may have slowed proliferation of the technology. Most virtual reality systems come with consumer warnings, including, seizures, developmental issues in children, trip and fall and collision warnings, discomfort, repetitive stress injury, and interference with medical devices. Some users may experience twitches, seizures or blackouts while using VR headsets, even if they do not have a history of epilepsy and have never had blackouts or seizures before. As many as 1 in 4,000 people may experience these symptoms. Since these symptoms are more common among people under the age of 20, children are advised against using VR headsets. Other problems may occur in physical interactions with one's environment. While wearing VR headsets, people quickly lose awareness of their real-world surroundings and may injure themselves by tripping over or colliding with real-world objects. VR headsets may regularly cause eye fatigue, as does all screen technology, because people tend to blink less when watching screens, causing their eyes to become more dried out. There have been some concerns about VR headsets contributing to myopia, but although VR headsets sit close to the eyes, they may not necessarily contribute to nearsightedness if the focal length of the image being displayed is sufficiently far away. Virtual reality sickness, also known as cyber sickness occurs when a person's exposure to a virtual environment causes symptoms that are similar to motion sickness symptoms. Women are significantly more affected than men by headset induced symptoms, at rates of around 77% and 33% respectively. The most common symptoms are general discomfort, headache, stomach awareness, nausea, vomiting, pallor, sweating, fatigue, drowsiness, disorientation, and apathy. For example, Nintendo's Virtual Boy received much criticism for its negative physical effects, including dizziness, nausea, and headaches. These motion sickness symptoms are caused by a disconnect between what is being seen and what the rest of the body perceives. When the vestibular system, the body's internal balancing system, does not experience the motion that it expects from visual input through the eyes, the user may experience VR sickness. 
This can also happen if the VR system does not have a high enough frame rate, or if there is a lag between the body's movement and the on-screen visual reaction to it. Because approximately 25–40% of people experience some kind of VR sickness when using VR machines, companies are actively looking for ways to reduce VR sickness. Privacy The persistent tracking required by all VR systems makes the technology particularly useful for, and vulnerable to, mass surveillance. The expansion of VR will increase the potential and reduce the costs for information gathering of personal actions, movements and responses. Conceptual and philosophical concerns In addition, there are conceptual and philosophical considerations and implications associated with the use of virtual reality. What the phrase, ''virtual reality'' means or refers to can be ambiguous. Michel O. S. Klein argued in 2005 that through virtual reality techniques will be developed to influence human behavior, interpersonal communication, and cognition. <laughs> <laughs> virtual reality in fiction <laughs> See also